I hear you guys, I hear you. I finally broke down, spent the money, and bought a proper cinema camera. So, let's rig this thing out. I looked at a lot of different cages for the Sony FX6, and normally I go with small rig parts because they're so affordable and high quality, but Tilta absolutely knocked it out of the park with their Sony FX6 cage. So that's what we're gonna be using today. The first thing I always add is the base plate, and this one has 15 millimeter rod adapters built into it and a rosettes, which are nice because you can add a side grip or extension arms right onto these. Now on the bottom of the base plate, they're using a Tilta dovetail. So if you use that system, you can slide right onto one of those dovetails. I don't, so I'm gonna be using a standard Manfrotto 502 plate right on the bottom. Now we're gonna add this piece of the cage to the top of the camera, and it has a bunch of standard mounting spots on it, like quarter 20, area locating pins, and so on. Now we're gonna put this bracket right on the side here and it has even more mounting spots on it. The FX6 uses Sony BP batteries and it comes with one and the battery life on this camera is actually pretty good and you can get really large BP batteries. However, if you wanna power all of your accessories off of one battery, it's best to use an external V-mount battery. So that's where this Tilta battery plate comes into play. And it actually has a little dummy battery here that slides in the back, but it doesn't have any connection. So no power comes through here. It actually all comes through this cable that plugs into the back. So I'll show you that. And then you plug this cable in right to the back here. Let's get a lens on here. And I could use a Sony lens with autofocus because this camera has really great autofocus and they just added the touch to follow autofocus capability. However, I wanna show you how you can use manual focus lenses with this camera setup. So I'm using a Rokinon Cine DS 24 millimeter lens that's fully manual. And because it's Canon EF mounts, I am using this little adapter that goes from Sony E mount to Canon EF mount, and it doesn't have any electronic connections. Now let's slide these 15 millimeter rods that come with the cage into the base plate here. And then I'm gonna put the Tilta Nucleus Nano follow focus on the rail here. And to power the motor, we're gonna use the Tilta side focus handle. And this has a Sony NPF battery in there. And then it just uses micro USB to power the motor. And I'm using the version with an area rosette so I can just mount it right on the side here. Next, we're gonna add the top handle up here. And for this build, I'm not actually gonna use the top handle that comes with the FX6 because this rig build is purely for capturing B-roll. So audio is not important for this. So I don't need these full-size XLRs. However, I will be doing a rig build in the future where I use this top handle. The top handle we are using is this one from Tilta. And it actually just screws right into the top here in these quarter 20 threads on the camera. Looks really clean and sleek. I love the look of this metal top handle so much better than this plastic one. It just has such a better design aesthetic, but obviously when you need audio, you gotta have this. Now, in my opinion, Tilta made a huge mistake when they designed this top handle. And in fact, pretty much all their top handles that I've looked at, they just put a little quarter 20 thread on the front of all their handles and then area locating pins on the top and bottom, and that's it. But those pins don't even work because that's a quarter 20 thread. That doesn't work with standard area locating pins. So it doesn't really make sense. I don't understand it, and it makes me sad because I really like Tilta's stuff, but their top handles, to me, are just all wrong. And that's where Small Rig gets it right every time. They put these standard area locating pins in the front of all their top handles. That way you can mount your monitor right here in the front of the top handle. Now they do have a cold shoe mount on the top, but if you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I hate cold shoes. They always fail, they always end up sliding off, no matter how much you tighten it down, especially if you put a heavy monitor on there. So I've come up with a workaround, and I actually haven't seen anyone else do this with tilted top handles, so you're gonna wanna see this. 
All I'm using is a little piece of NATO rail and then a quarter 20 screw. And normally I'd like to use two quarter 20 so it's much more secure. But again, they only have that one quarter 20 in the front of the handle here. Now they do have a 15 millimeter rod adapter here on the handle. And I assume that's where they want you to mount the monitor. They want you to throw a rod through here and mount it off to the side. But I hate that. I want my monitor perfectly centered. Plus I still have to mount this other monitor that came with the FX6. So let's get this on there. Now with this NATO rail on the front, I can use this monitor mount from small rig that goes from NATO rail to NATO rail. And I'm actually just going to clamp it down on the front here. Now let's get the monitor on top. And what I'm gonna be using is the Atomos Ninja V. And I already have an eight sin cage on there that has NATO rail on the bottom. So this will just slide right into place and then I can lock it off. And one of the main reasons I'm using the Ninja V is because the FX6 can output ProRes RAW now over HDMI and SDI. And look at this, you can put the monitor wherever you want and it's gonna stay there. And it's perfectly centered right in the middle of the camera and on the top handle here. It just looks so beautiful and it has that really nice low center of gravity that I love on all my rig builds. Now let's get that V-mount battery mounted on the back here. And I'm using this one from Yin Chem. It's 99 watt hours, it's nice and light and compact. However, if you need a lot more juice, you can use something huge like this from DNO. It's 190 watt hours. And look at this thing. It's just an absolute beast if you need that kind of output. I'm gonna run power from the V-mount battery back here up to the Ninja V. And what I'm using is just this simple D-tap to barrel connection. So I'm gonna plug this in. Now we still need to put the battery eliminator on the Ninja and then get it plugged in. Next, we're gonna add the monitor that actually comes with the FX6. And the reason that I'm still using this is because I wanna be able to see my settings and actually make adjustments to the camera when I'm out shooting. And the little mount here actually works perfectly with this top handle because Tilta put a bunch of different mounting options here that are all the standard mounts for these monitors. So I'm gonna mount mine up front here. There we go, now I can see both of my monitors side by side. I can see all my settings here and then the larger picture here. Now let's talk about the side grip. So you could add this grip that comes with the FX6 and the main reason that you would do this is because it has a lot of buttons on it. You have your start and stop right here, which is great. You have a zoom rocker and a bunch of other buttons and custom buttons you could program. Now, this is a great way to hold the camera, but because I already have a grip on this side, I just find it to be a little bit redundant and I have a top handle. Another main reason that I'm not gonna have it on the build is because I want to add a wireless transmitter and this little adapter actually comes with the tilt to cage and I'm gonna put it right here on the side. Now with this bracket in place, I'm gonna add the Hollyland Mars 400S Pro. And it's just nice to have a wireless transmitter on set, especially if you want a director's monitor or a remote focus polar. Now in order to power the transmitter, I can't actually use a Sony NPF battery because the transmitter sits too close to the side of the camera. So I'm actually gonna be using a continuous power. This goes from D-tap to a barrel connection. Let's get the SDI cable plugged in. This is just a short, lightweight, one foot SDI cable. So I don't have a bunch of excess cable flying around. Something great about the FX6 and other cinema cameras is that it has an SDI output and a full size HDMI output. That way I can do SDI output for the transmitter and then full size HDMI output for the monitor instead of looping out of the monitor into the transmitter where you could add even more latency. This makes it a much more low latency system. Now look at that. I think the wireless transmitter right here is just in the perfect spot. It's not up too high or in the back and getting in the way. It's just perfectly off on the side and this just really works so well for me. One of the final things that we're gonna add to this setup isn't totally necessary and that's a map box. And the reason that you don't absolutely have to have it is because the FX6, as you probably know, has built-in variable ND filters, which is just awesome. So of course this is redundant adding another variable ND system. But the reason I do like having it is because it does cut out flares.
and boom, look at that. It just looks that much more professional and ready for video work. Now, of course, you don't have to use any ND filters in the matte box if you don't want to. You could throw in other filters instead like mist or streak filters. All right, now everything is all powered on and it's all running off of just this one B mount battery in the back and it is just so nice to have everything running off of one system in such a really clean and compact way. Guys, I cannot tell you how much I just love this rig. It looks so good. It's so easy to hold. Show you just like this. Easy to pull focus with your finger. A setup like this works best for handheld work, but you could also easily throw this onto a tripod or slider. We finally did it. We rigged out a proper cinema camera and this thing is an absolute beast ready to film anything. So if you enjoyed it, hit subscribe right now and I'll see you guys in the next video.